All right, guys, welcome back to the Knives Fast channel. We have another review for you, and this is the Tuya Voodoo. We have a review for you, and it is the Voodoo. Anyway, all right, fine. Uh, faux show. There you go, guys. <laughs> okay, if you have no idea, if you're new around here, just ignore all of what just happened. But anyway, this is the Tuya Voodoo. Uh, David Freeman design, S90V. Uh, we will get into this beautiful Warren Cliff, but guys, this is the Knives Fast channel. Uh, if you're new around here, subscribe for the weirdness and stick around for the, the knives. I don't know. Uh, and uh, hit that notification bell and again, like and comment. Stick around, check me out on Instagram and check out a Monday night live stream, KF Live, Monday nights, 745 Eastern. Uh, the Tuya Voodoo is what we're looking at. And we're going to clear all this stuff out so you can see. All right, so it is titanium. Uh, we do have slightly contoured scales. Um, not a lot of chamfering around the edges. Uh, chamfered enough uh, that it's not sharp, but uh, kind of contoured and flat, if that makes any sense. We do have kind of this, uh, let's see what they actually call this finish on the handle. Um, handle material titanium, they call it a bronze finish, but it also has kind of a brushed look to it a little bit. It's kind of interesting. Again, uh, there's David Freeman's, uh, Freeman knife, I believe is what that is. Um, design is kind of even ends up with kind of a distressed brushed look. It's kind of, kind of cool. Uh, really cool clip, but it sits at an angle and you're going to have quite a bit sticking out of the pocket up there. Um, you do have a lanyard hole, not a reversible clip, a uh, titanium backspacer. You can see two things here. Number one, uh, the knife comes very close to the end and I can actually grab the tip, okay? Uh, I cannot poke myself, uh, but it does come way out to the end. Um, yep, can grab that tip. Um, and we are not centered. We are off to the show side. This is a pass around knife. I don't usually adjust knives that are pass arounds uh, or in for review just because I want you to see uh, what I got and what you're going to get. Now, uh, we do have a titanium frame lock with a steel lock bar insert. We do have uh, uh, satin hardware on this bad boy. Uh, mostly open construction, but your backspacer does come maybe a little over, eh, close to half the way there. I was going to say over a third, but it's closer to halfway. Now, by the way, if you put pressure on the lock bar, you can't thumb flick it, just so you know. Um, hold on, I'm going to wipe that blade. I've been cutting with it today, um, doing some cutting. I was cutting up actually a chunk of drywall, <laughs> but it worked well because it does have this kind of utility Warncliff uh, shape. Oh, come on. Get the goop off of there. There we go. All right. So, um, very cool. Now, you do have uh, hollow ground satin flats here. Uh, very beautiful oh, satin flats. Satin grind here uh, with vertical flats. Huge hole. This hole is immense. Uh, not my thing, typically. I don't really like a big hole, but it's not bad. Uh, you do have a nice flat spot to land up here. Not really any jimping. Not any jimping. You can get up here as well. Again, you got that utility tip. Feels really good. You do have a finger choil, which is interesting because now, if you think finger choil-wise, your handle actually extends to here. Cutting edge-wise, that's all you got left. Um, so it's a bigger knife with a small blade, a uh, small-ish blade. We'll talk more about that in a minute. It's not tiny or anything, just um, good access to the lock bar, good chamfer here to get into the lock bar, uh, moves very freely and easily to get into the lock bar, drops your thumb, good detent, solid detent you can see there, works really well. Um, nice for the thumb and you just gotta, but for me, I have to get in this upper corner to middle finger flick. Um, it's a little harder down here because your whole thumb wants to go in there. I can still do it. It's just not as easy. Um, and your blade steel is S90V. I haven't said that yet. So let's get that for everybody fusses at me. It is on bearings, drops freely. As you can see, if my finger wasn't in the way, uh, very, very cool. Now, lock up. Interesting. Okay. Hadn't noticed that before. Let's do, let's close it again. I mean, open it again. 
Yeah. Okay, so we got two things going on here. I noticed something else a minute ago. We've got some definite lock rock there. Um, we do not have any blade play side to side, only up and down. Uh, and right here, we have some definite, um, uh, wow, pivot lash. I mean, pretty significant pivot lash right there. We do not have uh, lock, I mean, um, a detent lash. Maybe, yeah, actually, maybe a slight bit of detent lash too. Yep. We do. So interesting. I haven't really experienced that on a lot of two years, but we definitely have that on this one. Now, um, as far as our uh, friendly neighborhood um, comparisons, there is the rat one, which is a little bit bigger, as you can see, not a lot. And the rat two, which is going to be quite a bit smaller. Man, my phone is going bazonkers here. Okay. Um, so there are your typical uh, comparisons. I'm trying to think, do I have a knife currently here in the collection? I don't think I have. Whoa, okay, sorry guys. A super aggressive Warncliffe that I can compare this to, unless my mind is just not working well right now. No, this is more of a sheep's foot. Um, I wanted something. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I have anything in the collection right now that really, ah, uh, nah, not that either. Okay, no, no, nothing to really compare it with, uh, you know, shape-wise. Uh, I will say, reminds me a little bit of my old Grant Gripper um, as far as, you know, some of that aggressive Warncliffe styling there. Now, these are available over at Blade HQ uh, for $250, $249 even, uh, it is an 8-inch knife overall, uh, 3.125 on the blade length. The cutting edge is just 2.75. You see what I mean? You went from 3.125 down to 2.75. Now, I know I like a sharp, I like a finger choil as well. Uh, but I think in this case, knowing I got full fingers, full four fingers back here, I would rather have more blade. Now, I will say this, because in this grip, my pinky and this finger both tend to hit right there. This and because we don't have heavy chamfering here and this is flat, that doesn't feel great when you bear down, okay? Um, doesn't feel really good uh, when you bear down. The clip is not bad. That one spot right there is not my favorite. So, for favorite? Um, okay, it is hollow grind, uh, 0.13 on the stock, so a little bit thicker, but again, we have a hollow, so it's gonna cut great. Uh, it is on bearings, five ounces, 5.02 ounces. Uh, the the uh, handle thickness, it says 0.44, but it definitely, because it's taller, feels thicker in the hand. Uh, almost too thick for me just because of that flat spot there. If it wasn't flat, if it was contoured off, uh, I think it would feel wonderful. Um, and the handle is 4.75 inches as far as cutting uh first of all you got the ability to get down in here i'm not cutting hard because i don't want to cut into my box but you can definitely get down in there easily um nice cutting performance as you can see quite whoa uh kind of curled that that was cool um but yeah quite a cutter not bad at all so uh i yeah so what do you guys think of this one now i made a mess um, but what do you guys think of, uh, this particular knife, which is the Tuya Voodoo by David Freeman? Uh, really would love to hear your comments down below. Is this one you would be interested in? I know, um, uh, when I did my unboxing, a lot of you commented, whoa, I really like that one. And, and, and that's awesome. So, uh, let me know if you're, in, if you like one and, and I'll leave a link down below. Um, and there you go, guys. So that is uh, the um, voodoo from to you. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And guys, thank you for your support and for watching the Knives Fast channel.